Hi all, welcome to the channel, welcome to my world, it's the world away and we now got issue 147 of Eagle Moss's Build the DeLorean. I do like these issues because obviously we've broken away now from the rails and the railway ties and we're going back to the hood box and uh, just to give you a recap this is what the hood box uh, is looking like at the moment actually probably better to show you on the close-up camera pretty detailed but we're going to be filling in this area here and I do believe that this is probably the last little bits that we've really got to add to it and as you can see when I'm talking about little bits there's hundreds of them as a matter of fact if I show you the actual pack that they come in Look how many stuff there is there. So uh, we're going to have some fun with this one. And I can see this uh, going on for a little bit of while. It is pretty simple what we've got to do though. We are just going to be attaching all of this into place. Uh, so at the end, it's looking just like this down here. And uh, to break the excitement in the next issue, we've got another railway tyre. So that'll be issue 148. And that's probably going to be out later in the week. Uh, stay tuned to the end of the video because I want to show you what I was doing over this weekend, which is completely unrelated to the uh, DeLorean build. Uh, but it is more related to trains, which is quite interesting. But uh, I don't know if you'll be interested in that. We'll have to see. Without further ado, though, let's get cracking. OK, so the first things we need are these black details here, which are labelled as 147E. And then we've got these two tiny black details here, which look exactly the same, but these are labeled 147E and F. Uh, the 147E, uh, sorry, F has actually got a bump on one side. If I can try and show you that on the close-up camera, can you see that? Uh, that way around, perhaps a little bump just on the top there. And that's how you can tell the difference between them. Uh, now these are going to be secured to these little black sections here uh, with CP screws. Now all the screws are provided in this. As a matter of fact, in this uh, issue, we've got hundreds of them. And as you can see, they are tiny. So I don't think I'm going to be able to use my normal PHO screwdriver. Instead, I've got my PHOO screwdriver, which should be able to load these up uh, a little bit better, making sure that they hold in place as they do there. So the first thing we do, we put in the 147F, which is the bumps. Now the bumps actually go towards this center spindle here. So when they're sitting on, the bumps are gonna be facing that, kind of like, probably better on the top camera there, kind of like that. But we've gotta get this screwed in from the other side, which is gonna be very fiddly, I reckon. <laughs> but once you've got one screw in, it's pretty easy, which we've just done. <laughs> so we'll get the second screw in there. These, uh, these issues really are the challenge of the builds when you've got the really tiny parts. And uh, if you've got big fingers, <laughs> it's going to be hard. And the only thing I can recommend for you is magnifying glasses. Just taking my time putting this one in. Until that's nice and tight. And there we go. That's those two details in this way. Just like that. And then on the other side, it looks just like that. As you can see, the bumps are in towards the center spindle. So we're going to do exactly the same for the next piece. And once again, I didn't even realize this had bumps as well. <laughs> but it has got a little bar on top, so it does differentiate. Uh, and this is just going to, again, the bumps are going to go towards the center spindle. Hopefully you can see how this is. But I'm aware that the black color is not really going to show up very well. But it's going to sit just like that. So once again, we'll get two screws into this. That's the first one. Just load up the uh, screwdriver for the second one. I tend to find they go really quiet at these bits because uh, my eyesight ain't what it used to be. So I have to concentrate even more than I would normally. And there we go. That's the second one in. So the second one looks just like that. And then if I show you the top of this detail, looking just like that. Now, I'm going to be bringing over the hood box here because these two details we've just done are going to be going into these ports here and here. We've actually got some lifters to put in, which look just like this. Again, show you on the close-up camera. So we need to make sure that these are put in. Uh, they are pretty symmetrical, so I don't think it's going to matter what way around they go. But once they're in, this is fiddly as well. Once they're in, they'll look just like that. No, it doesn't really, it's not really clear about what one goes in where, but I'm going to be putting E in this one and F in this one over here. So E is going to be nearer to the frame of the wall. So I've got the E one. 
Yeah, I mean, you know what, looking at these details now, it doesn't look like there's much difference between any of them, actually. But uh, we're going to be putting it in so the detail that we screwed in is facing this side. Basically, this shaft here is going to be going into the hole down the bottom. We're going to screw it in underneath with AP screws. So I'm going to get an AP screw out because this is going to be very, very fiddly because it won't sit in on its own. So my recommendation for this one is to put the screw through first at the bottom. And I've switched back to my PHO screwdriver for this. There we go. And then to put the detail on top, holding it in, and then screw up till you've got a bite, which I've just got there. And then line it up exactly as you want it. Excellent, and then tighten it up completely. Don't mind telling you, <laughs> that was fiddly. And once you've got the parts in, that's the first one in just like that. Let's do the second one. And once that's in, it's gonna look just like that. Now we can put that to one side because we're gonna need one of these cages again. We're gonna need the little sprue detail, which you've got here. So I've got my trusty sprue cutter just to cut one off holding it in the uh, left hand here so it doesn't ping off when I uh, cut it just like that. And then we need the valve top, which looks like a bulb like that. Uh, and quite simply, we've done these before in the previous issues where we've done the, uh, uh, the hood box details. We put the pin in through the bottom and then all we're gonna do is attach this just over the top, push it in really tight. It should hold up on its own. Unlike the others that had a wobble, as you can see, this one hasn't. Well, got a little bit of one, but not too bad. <laughs> now, this detail is going to be going in between the two that we had there into those two holes there. So what we'll do, we'll get this in. This is going to be held in with QP screws. And we actually screw this in from the top side rather than the bottom side. Now, the QP screws, if you remember this again from previous ones, are really tiny. So I'm having to use my smaller screwdriver again. Look how tiny they are. <laughs> Very tiny. Uh, and we get this lined up and put in. Here's the first one going in. Haven't made it too tight because obviously I need to get the other side in. And then that's the second one going in here. It's amazing how fiddly that actually is. I've obviously cut that there, but you're never going to notice because uh, that took me about five minutes just to get those two tiny screws in. Then we're going to get out the next cage, looking just like that with two sections in, which means I've got to cut off the last little pin we've got, which is actually on a sprue, because we do have another pin, which is on its own. It's already been taken off for us, so I'll uh, get that out there looking just like that. So quite simply, the smaller pin is going to go into the smaller hole. So I'll put that in there. I actually find putting these pins in <laughs> one of the hardest things to do as well. See, it's hard to get them in. If you've got fumbling fingers like me. There we go, that's that pin in. All ready to take a top. Now the top of this one is actually the bigger of the tubes, the one with the little wick on the top. So we get to push that into place. Nice and tight. <clears> there <throat> we go. That's going nowhere. Again, we've got a little bit of a wobble on that. If you're not liking that wobble, then I suggest just gluing the base of that down. I don't think I can get that in anymore. Let's try. If I uh, hold this in place and then push down with my tweezers, see if we can get that in anymore. No, that's pretty much what we've got. It is what it is. Uh, and then the bigger pin is going in the next side into the bigger hole that we got there. This one should go in a little bit easier, hopefully. Yes. And then this is going to have the shorter tube looking like that with the silver top. So we push that into place. But when it's finished, it's going to look just like that. Now that piece is going to go next to this big coil that we've got here, but down the bottom, just in these two holes here and here. And once again, once that's in, it's going to be held in with the uh, QP screws. Oh my God, I got that in first time then. <laughs> I'm not going to tie it up all the way because I've got to put the one in the other side. 
it goes in with the wick towards the uh, coil that's running down. Well, I didn't expect that, I have to say. <laughs> they both went in first time. So I can tighten those nice and tight now. There we go. And then that's what that's looking like. Now we've got a largest detail looking just like this. And it has a base looking just like that. And quite simply, uh, the top is just going to fit over the base. So the larger section here is towards this section of the base. So if I put that over the top, just show you what it looks like from underneath. There you go. And from the top. Now this is going to be held in place from the bottom here with an AP screw. And that's going to be screwed in just for the bottom, but through the centre hole. You've got two holes here. It's going to be going through the centre hole there. So let's put it through the centre. Just like that. Then this is going to be seated just onto this point right here. Which means I just put this over the top. Just like that. You've got a, a little peg in this side that's going to align with this hole just there. So when you put it in, you know which way around it's going to go. It's going to sit like that. And then once again, we need to hold this in place with a screw just underneath. But this time we're going to be using an RP screw. I don't recall ever using an RP screw, I have to say. Um, just looking at it, they look a lot longer. Longer and thinner than the normal screws that we're used to using. But I'm going to hold this in place. And we'll screw this into the hole. Just there. Underneath until it's nice and tight. Excellent, filling up. We've only got one more detail to put in there now, into those holes just there. And for that, we've got this base, and we've got these two cylindrical ob objects which look like capacitors, with them on the top there. As a matter of fact, just looking at the top details there, I wouldn't be surprised if we do have some wires to put over the top of that. So all we do is we're going to push these onto these. It doesn't ask us to glue them, but they are shaped. So you, you can only put them on one way. Uh, just line this one up as well. And this one's going to go in like that. So then we've got these two on here. And then quite simply, these are going to be fitted onto the hood box here. As you can see, you've got a little dot down the bottom there. It's going to accommodate that lug that we've got underneath. So we can make sure we put this in the right way. Should sit nice and neat, just like that. And then we're going to secure these in with AP screws. And then that, to me, looks like the hood box. Apart from any other details we might want to put in, which probably some wires on the top of this. Uh, but that's the hood box completed. So what I'm going to do, show you what that looks like completed there. Show you on the close-up camera. Might be better to show you in the dark, actually. <laughs> but there you go. Don't mind telling you that was a really fiddly issue. Uh, but the sad news is that that's probably the fiddliest I think it's going to get. We might have to have some little wires on top of those capacitors. But uh, coming to the end of the build now, we've got like, I don't know, 13, 12, 13 issues left to go. Uh, getting a little bit sad, I think, that um, uh, this is ending. I know I didn't really uh, have favour of doing the extended issues, but they have been a little bit challenging at times. But back to the normal grindstone next week when we've got the railway tie again. And talking about railways, I don't know if any of you have seen the uh, program, the Great Model Railway Building Challenge. It's a little bit like a, uh, I don't know, like a celebrity cook-off sort of competition. Uh, well, one of our teams from Corby actually got through to the semi-final of it. Now, I've just recently gone to a model train fair in Corby, uh, and here's some footage of some of the things that uh, we saw but the footage you're seeing now uh, was the one that actually won to get them through to the semi-final. Uh, and I've got some other pictures there. And I, I tell you what, I haven't really got into model railways, but the... Um the detail and the, the stuff of these really does make me want to experiment, I have to say. Um, I don't know if uh, any of you model builders out there are interested in model railways, but it is an interesting thing that uh, I'd like to know in the comments if that's something that you'll be interested in too. Because if it is, I really did want to build a steam engine for the channel as a part work, but I can't find any apart from the C57 that I think Diagostini is doing. But uh, I have got quite a lot of the uh, model railway stuff anyway, because my dad's an avid fan of that, and he's got loads and loads of stuff. But it might be something that I will introduce to the channel in the future. Let me know what you think. Anyway, listen, I do hope you liked that video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, take care. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please remember to give it a like. And if you haven't done so already, please remember to subscribe. Take care.